It's a little after 6 p.m. right now. It's a hard Monday. I want to talk about not getting to know your neighbors that you live with for a long while and not knowing what's going on with them. And how does it affect you in ways that you can't even describe? See, when you're living in an apartment complex, sometimes you like to live by yourself and not deal with people except on a chatty basis every once in a while. Maybe if you're lucky enough, you have friends to can check up on you from time to time and you do the same. But an unknown family that you've lived with experiences a major loss. I guess for a lot of us, we just don't pay attention to it. I did. For about a year, I'd seen this family struggle with a, an elderly grandmother, I believe. I know the job of being a caretaker is a grueling task at times. I have talked about being a caregiver, but really not going into full details of what it's like unless one's been a caregiver. Well, when you're outside looking in on a family, it's just, it's devastating. Especially when it brings up the memories and pain that I have. I emphasize more than what I ever have because I've walked the path and still on it. It'll take the family a great time to grieve their loss. I wish I'd known this family. I wish I'd known other challenges I could have helped them out. I could have helped them out and it would have helped me out regarding my own issues and explained over here because it would have gotten myself out of it. I would have been labeled as another caregiver to help out if I could. But I was barely taking care of myself when my brother died. I lost my will to live and things to take care of, but I had to force myself to take care of them. And it wasn't easy. Since my brother passed away, I'm still trying to rebuild my own sanity in my own life. But if I actually gave a little bit more care, maybe something would have done. Maybe something could have been done. But it wasn't. And that's the thing that kicks my ass right now. I'd seen how families struggle when they care for their loved ones. When they become their only caregivers and you don't trust any other strangers, they trust their own family members to do so. It takes a hell of a lot of sacrifice and a lot of energy, a lot of resources. I speak from personal experience. My mother had been a caregiver. She had taken care of our grandmother and, and, and until they passed away. Despite the fact that she was still trying to live a happy, normal life and was able to laugh like crazy at certain times, I know like crazy now, she was hurting inside. Because she missed her mother. And when she started hearing about her family leaving her left and right, her siblings, it was too much for her. In the last several days of her life, actually the last several years of her life, she had been deteriorating to the point where she just didn't want to live anymore. Because the pain and loss of losing her family was too much for her to bear. And it 
was ready for her to die. We could have let her just die, uh, but we didn't. She lingered and then passed away. Uh, she could have forgiven us. There was a hell of a lot of struggle and a lot of toll on her. As strong as she was, she wasn't all that strong. She had to lean on us more and more. And that was just my brother and me. And I had to pull up a hell of a lot of strength from somewhere just to take care of him. My family's gone. And I understand about the concept of being alone. Despite having neighbors. The pain and the loss is so damn severe. Sometimes. It's numbing. And you look at your days in a fog half the time. Shock sometimes wears off and then it kicks back in again. And right now, the family has to deal with pieces of their own heart ripped out. And they have to grieve and they have to go through it. How you've tried to throw an olive branch. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't help. I just wish I knew the right words to say. And the only thing I could do is just cry. And I mean seriously, bawl like crazy in front of them because it's the only response I had. Because I understand their pain too damn well. I understand the struggles of being a caregiver 24-7 on a constant basis. I understand the ways he had to find supplies, funding, resources. But when everyone's gone and they're all alone, sometimes at night it just kills me. I had a bedroom I slept in for a hell of a long while. And I couldn't bear to sleep in it any longer. So now for about almost two years I've slept in another room. Because I couldn't bear to deal with the memories and the pain. And the last day that I remember my brother I could not deal with that ever again. It was bad enough when I had to deal with Ma's loss back in 2013. I don't think I could have been able to live in the apartment either. It had to been time to leave. I understand the changes that they're going to be going through. Maybe there's a lot more I don't know of. But regarding the emotional level right now, I know it all too damn well. And the hardest damn thing is what I emphasize more. I keep remembering my own family because that's where I draw the pain and the memories from. And how to relate. And it still hurts like a son of a bitch. Every time there's a fire engine or an ambulance that came by after my brother's passing, it always left me a sick, a sick feeling in my stomach. Every time the ambulance came by, when my brother was still alive, we called him. 
I always have to sick stomach or feeling in my stomach. It was worse than when I started treating it as a, almost a routine situation. It was the same damn thing dealing with Ma. When I got too much in the damn comfort zone for this shit. That was the last game for last. And I couldn't bear to deal with it. It was just like David. Until they rolled him into the damn ER as a slab. My brother was a smart ass all his life. At times he was an asshole, but he wasn't smart ass. Some things would crack him up. The last time he actually had medical services done on him at home, he was treating a boil that got excised surgically, and then they had to have home health nurses come by to keep examining the wound as it healed, kept putting bandages on him. And I had to do the IV pushes on him. That to the point I was became routine. So they took out the tubes. But David always kept looking at that wound and kept saying it was still a chopped piece of meat. We both laughed at it. I wasn't laughing when that damn joke came to my head and I was seeing my brother wheeled in like a... I just couldn't... I just... I yelled and screamed at a damn corpse. And I almost got dragged out. I should have been dragged out, kicking and screaming. I should have been screaming my lungs out at him. There's a day that goes by that I don't miss my family. I don't miss my Dave and my. I knew she was dying. This was only a matter of time. My brother and I kept talking about it for months. We kept seeing the signs that she was going down and down. No matter how many times we kept trying to keep her spirits up, it just didn't work. Well, she just gave up. It was hard as hell to deal with it. We had to scream and yell ourselves at that support group said we weren't we were affiliated with friends. And it was hard dealing with that. I still have a hard time dealing with it on some occasions. When the day was still alive, we were still surviving. We had pushed up, pushed out the pain because we were still living and struggling with each other, and we were going to make things together. We were going to live somehow. My brother, he didn't. Diabetes gave him a damn stroke. Actually, he gave himself the damn diabetes. And I helped. And it was his will. I'm still responsible. That's still a rest on my shoulders. So much so. There's too many ifs. And that's what tears at me at times. With Mama, it was a different story altogether. She was dying, she was tired, she wanted to go home. That's a different thing altogether. My brother wasn't ready. He was still trying to fight, but. Maybe somehow inside he was still so tired. He just decided to say, fuck it. Dad was taking care of him so damn long, he figured I'd take care of myself. Dumb bastard. I would say, dumb fucking bastard.
was a lot of anger. Had him in it. You see, I understand what it's like to have family that you loved and lived with for all your lives when you do caregiving. What the struggle is to do what you have to do to take care of them. It doesn't matter the method. It matters that you did. It matters that you can constantly do. Because eventually when you do lose them, it rips a hole in your heart and your soul. It takes a hell of a long time to Still, if there's a thing called healing, I haven't felt it. It takes a slow time sometimes. Some days are good, and other days are miserable as hell. Especially when it's depression and anxiety and PTSD and grief. I call it the four evil horsemen myself. And I can't function very well. I try to function on, on some days and other days I'm just an emotional basket case and just can't get out of bed sometimes. I got a dog that forces me to do so. And come July 4th, it gets worse and worse. Because I got to deal with neighbors and their necessity need of fireworks. So now I have to force myself back into reality and deal with that in a more combative nature and push back the pain. Today was a day the pain came back roaring. All the memories came. All the feelings, all the empathy just brushed right out and all I could do was just hug the neighbor and it's all and cry. There aren't any words. There's no exact science on words. But it's just basically company. Sometimes you want to be alone and grieve like crazy, and other times you do want people to help you out. I don't know how others will handle it. But I tell you something, when I felt totally all alone, I guess those are the times I needed to be alone. To really get in contact with myself and the powers that be. In order to deal with it. The neighbors who knew the family who passed away, loud, vocal, sharing memories, some laughter, some anger, frustration, emotions are raw. I can't, I can't deal with it. I honestly can't deal with it. Nor can I deal with suppressing the feelings I've got right now or the thoughts are just put him into a haze because you know, I'm still processing what happened a long time ago and I would call it recently back in 2018 so I'm still processing through the grief and I know what they're going to be walking through as I hope I do As for others, there's no sage advice. You do what your heart and your soul dictate. If you have words, you use words. But if you don't, just be a presence. Hug if you need to. Cry if you need to. And just show them your heart. thing I could say. Anyway, I think that's enough for me for right now.